what's the strategy coming in today and did you pull it off? Uh, yeah, look, we obviously had uh, Finn Allen pre-sign coming into today, which was a, a big pay, piece of the strategy. We, we needed a top-order player, and um, yeah, Finn's going to fit that role really nicely. And then in, in Matty Hurst and Keaton Jennings, we've uh, we've brought two young guys in. Uh, Matty Hurst, really exciting young talent, uh, who's a wicketkeeper as well, so um, can can play that backup role should we need it. And, and Keaton Jennings is an experienced cricketer now, left-hander, who's a top-order player. So um, yeah, all in all, we uh, we filled a couple of the roles that we think we're going to need throughout the tournament at some stage. Yeah, and how does that play into availability? Are these guys going to be around for a lot of the tournament? All fully available. And how important is that for the team, being with that consistency? Yeah, I think we saw last year when we did lose a couple of our internationals at the back end of the tournament that it did have an effect. And um, yeah, so we've certainly prioritised the availability pace this year. And um, hopefully, if we can make it deep in the, in the tournament, that uh, we'll have these guys around. Were you surprised by anything that happened in the draft today? Uh, oh, there's always a couple of surprises. Um, yeah, clearly we would have loved to have kept Laurie Evans, but uh, once we'd, we'd uh, done the Finn deal, that we knew there was a chance that he'd get taken by another team. And, and to go at pick two maybe was a bit higher than what we expected. But yeah, we always thought that there was that chance that he'd, uh, he'd end up somewhere else. Yeah, what did you make of the draft today? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think there's always a little bit of excitement coming into the draft um, this time of year, especially sort of a bit unknown who's going to pick who, but I'm um, pretty happy with where we landed. Obviously stoked to, to have Soph pre-signed for us for a couple of years and, and to retain Jonesy was excellent. I think she's been a standout player in world cricket for the last couple of years and, and someone else who probably no, not many people know lots about in Hema. I think she's just an exciting talent and will make a big impact in our middle order. Yeah, so you've played with her at Gujarat. Can you tell us a bit more? I know she's a name that might not be as familiar to some fans. Yeah, I've, she's certainly been one that I've kept my eye on the last couple of years in the WPL. She's made her way into the Indian squad for the World Cup. Um, I think she's a pretty explosive player, can clear the boundary better than most people. So um, just pumped to have her. She's a great teammate to have. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed batting with her in the WPL this year in Gujarat. We had a couple of big partnerships, so I'm really excited to see what she can do in the Scorchers Orange. And I know you spoke a bit beforehand about availability and how important that would be. How good is it going to be having Soph and him available for the back end, at least, and for most of the tournament? Yeah, absolutely. I think had we got the luck of the draw, I think Soph, Soph and him will only miss one game, hopefully, at the start. So um, I think it's a, a great decision. And these, these things come into play as well. You want your players available for as, for as long as possible and especially heading into the back end of tournaments. So, um, yeah, pretty pumped with those decisions that we made. And, um, yeah, equally pumped to see Jonesy back. And there's going to be a really strong Indian presence across the league this year. How much of that do you think is about that availability piece towards the finals? Yeah, I think the, the Indian presence absolutely is about the availability. I think we've seen the damage they can do on the global stage when they play against different countries around the world and in different conditions. So those players know what they're doing. Um, they've developed their games excellently across the last few years. And I think, um, you know, it'll bring some more fans to the game as well. Um, I think it'll be an exciting tournament. They're, all the teams look pretty close. Um, in terms of their skill sets and, um, you know, value. So we'll, we'll see what happens. A couple of spots left to fill with local players. Who, what, what things do you still need to club, think the club needs to add to where that squad? Yeah, not sure. I haven't had too many discussions about that. I think you always probably need a, a fast bowling backup somewhere if you can. Um, but certainly we'll look to some WA players, I guess, to, to fill those spots. I think Becky Grundy's running a, a good program there at WA. So I'm sure there's been people putting up their hands left, right and centre for those final couple of spots. And with the T20 Spring Challenge, does that give players a chance to put their hand up maybe to grab a late spot? I think so. I think it's a great initiative by Create Australia and the ACA to provide that platform for players to get exposure to T20 cricket and perhaps put their hand up for a big bash spot. So whether it's with the Scorchers or someone else, I think it's a great opportunity for young players in, in the country to show off their skills and you know they've got nothing to lose if they don't have a contract now I think it's a really great time for them to to show show the country what they can do and, and put their hand up for that big bash spot. The way that played out for you guys? Yeah very good um, we obviously come in with some plans and some options but um, yeah we landed where we were hoping for so yeah happy. Yeah what were you looking to add to the lineup with those picks? Yeah, I, as we kind of said when we are out there, we knew what Soph and Amy bring to our list and then the other option was um, a top order batter who can find the boundary um, and I think she's shown that in the recent India Premier League, um, how she can access the boundary and obviously now being in and around the Indian side too, so it um, gives us some versatility at the, at the top of the order. Yeah, probably a, a face that's not too familiar to some of the um, 
that we're real fans. Uh, but some at Moonies that you played with? Yeah, so Moons has obviously played with uh, Hema, but also, um, as I say, she's just starting to come onto the international circuit too. And um, I watched a fair bit of the WPL and she was someone that um, was really attractive from, from how she goes about it. She obviously got a big bat lift, looks to school boundaries. So um, we know that that's what the game is after. Um, and it helped with Moons knowing um, her and having that relationship too. Yeah, and how's that? play out for you guys in terms of availability, I guess, with maybe Soph arriving late and Amy leaving early? Yeah, so that's, you know, that was one of the biggest challenges this year with who we went for. Obviously, um, from a Scorchers perspective, we've always prioritised availability. Um, it's likely that Soph will miss maybe our first game with the Indian games, um, but at least the finals piece is there. And similarly with um, Hema too, so the, the finals piece is a big one. Um, unfortunately, obviously, Amy Amy leaves us part way through and that's something that we'll have to look at but um, you know we've got the depth in our domestic talent too and often it takes a whole squad to be able to win a tournament so that that's something that um, our domestic players will be ready for when when they get the opportunity. And did anything surprise you with the way that things played out today? There was a few surprises to be honest um, we kind of run through a bit of a mock draft and there was a few names that got pulled out where we wasn't expecting um, the nature of these things I guess you never know what teams are looking for or, or how they match up but um, yeah there's definitely a few curveballs in there.